Today on Libertad's video, I'm going to show you how I took this and turned it into this. Welcome to Libertas Video, the channel dedicated to encouraging, entertaining, and inspiring you through costume and prop builds and reviews. Now today, I'm going to take you through the process of what I went through to make this custom leather Eivor gauntlet from Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Now the game's going to be released just in a couple of days. Probably by the time this video is released, it's either going to be out or like out in a day. So figured it was a good time to take you through this whole process, more of an overarching like fly over the land, look at how I made the gauntlet, not necessarily a tutorial. If you're looking for more of a tutorial on how to build a gauntlet like this, I would recommend my Bayek Gauntlet and Hidden Blade tutorial, which I took, you know, it was like a seven to nine part series on building the Bayek Gauntlet. So if you wanna see something that's a little more in depth, I would recommend that. This is gonna be much more about, you know, the overarching look of it and why I made some of the decisions that I did. So. That being said, let's jump right into it. All right, so first and foremost, I started off with a template. Now, I made a template off of tuck tape and tin foil. So basically what you do is you wrap your arm in tin foil and then wrap it with duct tape, draw out a pattern, and then cut it out carefully. Now, this makes a pattern specifically for your arm. So I've made that in the past. It was for like a Aguilar gauntlet, which I never ended up completing, which I dismayed to this day about. Uh, but I've also used it for like my Aragorn Van Brace as well as a Brotherhood Gauntlet that I had started. Um, and then I used it for this as well. Basically what I do is I just adapt it. I, I take that design and I just adapted it to the new look. So I studied the cosplay reference guide and then I just transferred over a lot of the details that I saw there in Adobe Illustrator onto a picture of that gauntlet, like straight down. I just took a picture of it, imported it, drew out the lines, and then I've used that to transfer the new details of what I saw in this gauntlet there. So with that being done, I printed it off. I tested it on my arm. Unfortunately, it was just gonna be just a little too small. So what I did when I put this on the leather and prepared the transfer, I just drew about an inch around. I have a little extra border around the gauntlet so I knew it would be a little bit better um, fitting for my arm. After I cut out the leather, I took this pattern and like with this infinity loop, which is what I'm calling it, I took a stylus, my leather stylus, and then I just pressed in over the lines here and it transferred it right onto the leather. So it worked out great. And then I take those tooled lines and then for like the infinity loop, use my swivel knife to cut in the grooves and for everything else is more like a beveled edge. So I can go around the border, beveling the edge, and then these vertical lines that go along the gauntlet, beveled those as well. Super simple, um, but just, you know, take some time. And then I also knew that I needed a bajillion little holes because there's just so much stitching that Ubisoft put into this gauntlet design. And that's something I knew I was gonna need. So. Um, just drilled a bajillion holes like I marked them out in my stylus. Now the reason why I drill is I've had a ton of problems in the past. I typically used to like punch holes into the gauntlet with like you know my like tooth you know stitching line maker um, but it wouldn't make holes big enough like they would close up a little bit when I dyed the leather and you know, it just became so difficult to move the needles in and out, especially when you have to like double stitch them. So what I ended up doing is deciding, you know what, I'm just gonna drill these. So I just took a, you know, handheld drill and took a drill bit slightly bigger than the needle itself and just, you know, just, just drilled forever. Bugged the heck out of my wife uh, while I was doing it, but you know what, it works out really well. I've been having a lot of success with that. Pulls up the leather a little bit, so it's not as clean of a look, but it saves me so much time. And then not to say that my fingers were not super numb after the whole process of stitching like these thousand bajillion holes, but it was so much easier doing it this way than any other way. So that's a recommendation. If you're having an issue stitching, try drilling. You know, do a test piece first, but then just try drilling. It might work out really well for you. Um, 
so yeah, basically once the holes were drilled and everything was tooled, I dyed it the chocolate brown and waited for it to dry. And then once the chocolate brown had set in, um, one of the things I did realize, I should back up just a little bit, is when I've been dyeing stuff in the past, like even with my um, Aragorn van brace, the dye will kind of saturate the leather and close up some of the tooling marks that I have already tooled. Um, so what I did this time around, and it worked out really well for me, is while I was on that third round of drying of the dye, I actually took my stylus and pushed back in the grooves just to make sure they were nice and deep. So when the leather dried, it set really, really well. And I think this, this worked out really well for this particular gauntlet. So another little tip there. Um, I decided, you know, because I hadn't gone with what's one-to-one -one in the cosplay reference guide, like they have this kind of triangular leather piece where the infinity symbol is, I didn't want to do that. So what I did is I tooled it in, so you already know that, but I decided let's paint it silver because um, let's just make it dramatic, give it a little bit extra flair. We've seen a lot of silver accents on Assassin Hidden Blade gauntlets before, so let's not, why not do it here? So what I did is I, I painted it with my Angelus silver and I think it looks really good. Almost makes it look like a little metallic piece that was inset into the leather and just really draws a lot of attention to it. I, I know it's hidden behind a hidden blade right now, but um, it was. A, I, I think it turned out really cool. I'm really happy that I did it. And that's just an encouragement for anybody else out there. It's like, if you're not gonna, you don't feel like you have to go one-to-one -one with these things. I mean, some cosplayers will want to, to get as accurate as possible. And that's awesome if you wanna do that. But if you are stressed out about it and like, I don't know how I'm gonna do this, don't be afraid to make it your own because at the end of the day, then it's just going to make it more unique to you and show your style and you know your flair. So that's that's awesome. So I would encourage anybody who doesn't want to go one to one that they don't have to. Um, after the leather had dried, I sealed it, you know, with my standard sealer, and then I decided I needed to start stitching forever, and that's what I did. I stitched all my vertical lines up here. You know, this triangular pattern as well. I mean, there's just stitches everywhere. And then I had to stitch on the fake fur, which I got from Amazon. Um, even the wax thread I got on Amazon as well. It's a little less high quality, but I got a whole bunch of different variations of colors for really, really cheap. So I would say it's worth it. I'll put a link in the description below if you, you're looking for some wax thread. Um, there's better out there, but this will give you a lot of variety. Um, so, of course, that's going to be affiliate link. Just help out the channel if you if you use it. If you don't, that's okay. Uh, <laughs> and we have, you know, once once the stitching was done, I knew I had to stitch the top part to the bottom, so the top plate to the bottom plate, and that was going to be a challenge because I had to put the buckles on first. So I had to figure out all the straps, which you know I had also I already had as well. Um, so I got these straps placed on. I use Chicago screw rivets for everything. If you've seen any of my videos in the past, you know I just love Chicago screw rivets because it gives you the opportunity to fix things if they go wrong. So then just hammering your rivets down. Um, maybe a little less authentic, but it saves me a heck of a lot of time when I need to like conceptualize and test some of these straps out first. So did that, um, and then I stitched the top portion onto the bottom. And so... That was that. Well, only other thing that I had to do when it came to the leather is I had some red suede that I had already purchased like two years ago. I used the existing Chicago screw rivets, so I was able to back those out where they're attached to the actual strap, you know, underneath. I used those same holes and just attached a portion of the red suede there, and then I can just wrap it around real easily onto the wrist, and boom, it's done. You know, that I think it was this really cool little accent that they put into that, and... Um, makes it practical for me as well because it's just another tie down portion that keeps this you know gauntlet is just not going to move on your arm it's not sliding around or anything so one of the last things i had to decide was what am i going to do about the hidden blade um you might be wondering to yourself why didn't i just go with the official replica avor hidden blade and there's several reasons why i didn't um it's true that ubisoft has released one uh, they didn't sell it from ub workshop in the united states so i can't get it from them. GameStop, I believe, has it, but it's like $70, and I don't know if that's just marked up or if that's COVID times and manufacturing is just tighter and we need to spend a lot more money on stuff for the sake of it. Um, 
but that's just stupid expensive and you could see that the hidden blade when it was shot out was like this big like it wouldn't pass my hands and that's been my big gripe with the official replicas from the past and i just knew i was going to be disappointed like the detail of the hidden blade is going to be great i'm sure but the blade size just come on you know it's just sad uh once again I'll make a great display piece but i'm not interested in another hidden blade that's like six inches long um so there were some reasons why i didn't want to go with that so i had to decide what do i want to do for the hidden blade on my gauntlet um the very first thought i had was go with the spirit halloween altair hidden blade um so i actually went to spirit halloween on halloween and bought their last one and came back and i was going to paint it gold and put some ornamentation on it and boom you know i was going to have a hidden blade i was going to do the modification where you put some you know like fishing wire on the activation button and then it makes it str string activated so kind of like this uh but it would just be a little different you know based on how their spring activation works um that was a great idea because the blade's certainly long enough it's got the altair look so it's a little bit more simplistic so even though if you did put some detail on there it could sell the look because it's roughly uh 200 years after the events of assassin's creed valhalla so you know Obviously, you could step up. You got some good luck. It would it would be a good look. Um, so if anybody's interested in doing something like that, the blade's like thirty bucks on Spirit Halloween. So there's there's that option. But I also have my eBay dual action hidden blade. This is the Edward one from Assassin's Creed Black Flag. So I've I've reviewed this in the past. I'll put a link in the description below where you can see that review. Um, love this hidden blade. I mean. The downside is it's built for being under the wrist. So typically this tab, so you, you pull it out, string activated, awesome. And then you would be able to press in like with your middle finger and shoot the blade back in. When it's on the top of the wrist, it doesn't really work out that well. But, you know, even this is pretty satisfying, even when I have to press in with my right hand. Either way, no matter which direction I went in, the Spirit Halloween or with this, I was going to have to manually use my right hand to reset the blade. This is just a little more satisfying than pushing the blade back into the housing. That's just my personal opinion. Also, it's got this nice metal look on the outside, so it's got it feels more real in that sense. And because I'm making it out of leather, everything is real. It's not just plastic. That's what I wanted to go with. Um, so that was my design, you know. Desire, the only downside was I had this like pirate skull staring at me in the face. So went to Hobby Lobby. I knew I needed some ornamentation for this and just start perusing, you know, some of their jeweled section or whatever. Um, it was right next to the leather, consequently. But I knew I wasn't going to be able to go one for one with the hidden blade. Just in the amount of time that I had, um, I already liked this look a lot, you know, with the slight gold accents, but more silver. Just personally, I like that look a little bit better. Um, so I'm like, okay, well, let's try to find some things that look like plunder, you know, like a Viking had plundered a monastery and just wanted to toss some of those like trophies on their hidden blade. So that's exactly what I did. I found like some of these bronze accents. I found this jeweled, like, you know, I need, I needed an emerald, you know, looking thing. And this was the closest one I found. So I like, glued that onto this and glued that onto the blade. I also found this ornamentation from like a necklace that they had and so i just sewed that down onto the leather overall i think it looks really really cool like i'd be really excited if um you know as you upgrade your hidden blade it gets more of a silver and gold look um also this means that i could you know feasibly flip it around and put it underneath the arm so hopefully in the game you're going to join the hidden ones or the assassins and be able to make that sacrifice maybe then i'll be able to update this hidden blade at the end of the day, whatever you choose, if you're going to do a gauntlet as well, I think there's a lot of good options out there. If you want to go with the Spirit of Halloween, that's awesome. I've reviewed it. I'll put a link in the description below. You can get a full detailed look. I've even used that Altair Spirit of Halloween one for my modern Assassin gauntlet. So there's a lot of options out there, you know, just in terms of just repainting one hidden blade. You could go with the Edward gauntlet. I'll put a link in the description below as well. And... I think you'll be in great shape. I think this looks really cool. I did do some research. They already do have a Avor styled one, you know, with the, the bigger top plates on here that's gold. You know, we'll shoot out the blade. It works exactly the same as this one. So, 
you know, even in their marketing image, it's on underneath the arm. So that's something you'll have to, you know, realize is that you'll have to push this down. Um, but that is an option as well. So I'll put a link for that one in the description. Um, and if you don't want to go with that one, if it's not available, my recommendation would go for an Aguilar inspired one. So that's gonna have much more of like the filigree. Um, you can probably get it with the gold look, and if not, you can just paint right over it. It's gonna look a lot more oriental or Eastern inspired, and that's where the hidden blade is supposed to come from, Constantinople in the game. So um, it'll have a little bit more Eastern flair to it, you know, coming from North Africa, no wait, Spain, <laughs> sorry. Um, but it'll have some of the more of those designs. I think it would be a, a good fit for the, the Van Brace or Gauntlet as well. So you have several good options, especially if you want to go with like a dual action hidden blade like this. Um, I'll put links in those, once again, I'll links for those in the description below. Those will be affiliate links. Um, no one's telling us to, to sell these or anything, but if you use them, it will help us out at no additional cost to you, simply because if you click on that, we'll get a small commission. So if you use it and you buy a Hidden Blade, thank you very much, you've helped out the channel, we'll be able to make more content this way. If not, that's okay as well. Um, whatever you choose, it's gonna be great. You're gonna, you got a lot of good options out there. Um, so yeah, that's gonna really wrap up the building of this gauntlet if you have any questions whatsoever let me know in the comment section below if you need a tips or tricks on hey I, I, I'm, I'm building one myself but I'm having an issue here what is your suggestion I'll try to respond as quickly as possible um, because I know uh, sometimes it helps just having someone who's walked the path before you to answer some of those questions so let me know in the comment section below if you have any questions otherwise that's gonna do it for us here we'll see you on the next Libertas video